else to get to. This is one that Jeff Goodman, the field of 68, uh, UNT, North Texas head coach Grant McCaslin has emerged as Texas Tech's top target after the Red Raiders have swung for a few big names and missed. This according to the stadium. North Texas plays tonight in the NIT against Oklahoma State. He, of course, six years, former Baylor assistant, has been on the Texas Tech staff before and, of course, took UNT to the NCAA tournament back the year that also Baylor won the national title. Ed Cooley is official. He, of course, is now at Georgetown. So what happens to Rick Pitino's replacement at Iona? The guy that just made a run at Fairleigh Dickinson. Tobin Anderson will be the next head coach, according to our good friend John Fanta. He is now going to be the new head coach to replace Patino at Iona. Uh, Michael Martin is going to be our guest at four. He's the Brown University head basketball coach, knows Cooley very well, and maybe gives us a little idea of what all this movement means. Plus, he can talk Princeton basketball with us uh, today at just after 4 o'clock. Yeah, I think Texas Tech is wise to hire Grant McCaslin. Uh, Scott drew, drew, drew culture in a place that really cares about their basketball is something that you've seen explode at Kansas State, who's in the Sweet 16 in year one. Uh, I think someone would be foolish not to bring Paul Mills uh, up a level. Um, you know, look, and Grant did a great job at, at UNT, has done a great job at UNT. Uh, he'll do a really good job, I believe, at Texas Tech. Um, and But that would be the, you know, the two big dog sports have gone, t you know, essentially through Baylor to get their head coaches at Texas Tech now. Yeah, they have. Um, that's... Pretty amazing, uh, given some of the, the culture comments over the years at different times. But uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, been uh, interesting to see how that's how that's evolved. And uh, good for Grant McCaslin, and good for Scott Drew as his coaching tree, you know, sprouts some new leaves uh, off uh, one of the the strong branches that was already created with McCaslin previously. Uh, I'm sure he loves it. I'm sure he's very happy for Grant McCaslin. I'm sure he's very happy for Jerome Tang, but I'm sure he also would love it if they'd go coach somewhere outside the Big 12 like McCaslin was doing to not have to face his buddies and, and the guys who know him so well and vice versa. Um, as, yeah, you're looking at uh, p perhaps a, uh, what, a quarter of the league being – you know, Baylor staffers together at one point in time, and there's probably guys I'm missing. And, of course, you could draw that as well. You mentioned McCaslin was at Tech previously, so you could probably do that a lot of ways. But from our chair where we're sitting, the, yeah, we view him as a guy from Baylor who was on Scott Drew's staff. So He's a Baylor alum, too. So at Baylor alum, there you go. So I don't know if I knew that or, or not. But, yeah, that, I mean, that definitely hammers it home even more. But, yeah, I'm sure Scott Drew's happy. Just don't want to keep seeing guys. It's like – who, who's next? Paul Mills going to go West Virginia? Are we going to get uh, – <laughs> I mean, uh, get uh, – Alvin Brooks go on to uh, what Oklahoma State? We gonna, I mean, how, how far is this thing gonna go? But no, good for him, and and that's a great hire if that's who they make. The only issue I would take is if I'm Grant McCaslin, I'm not retweeting that since it already says, since it also says after missing on a bunch of other names. I'm curious, is that Patino? I know that was thrown out there just by Tech fans because that's what everybody does during a coaching search. Um, although that just Location-wise, nobody ever thought that that would be all that realistic for Patino to head out to West Texas. But uh, I'm curious who else maybe was in mind. I haven't really looked uh, much on, on social media for what the scuttlebutt has been. But that's, that's a great hire regardless. Well, look, Chris Beard was an up-and-coming name, but I wouldn't have called him. like I wouldn't have said that when they hired Chris Beard. I was like, oh, man, that was a, a huge swing there. That was a smart move to, at the time of where Chris Beard was in his career to bring him in at Texas Tech. And, and look, Mark Adams was the, the top assistant on that staff and stayed and took over. That obviously ended the way that it did. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes it's not always about, like, you know, going, getting the, the big name. I mean, that um, – you know, the, some of the most successful coaches are the ones who, who, got, who weren't a big name at one time. You know, at one point, Nick Saban, nobody knew who he was, right? At one point, nobody knew who Bobby Knight was. It's just a guy that they hired, and they're like, oh, well, who's this guy? You know, and then he, they have huge success. Yeah, it was, Bob Knight was at Army yeah. uh, at, at one point, and, of course, uh, Chris Beard did rise up the ranks pretty quickly and then was even at UNLV but never really was there and took the job at Tech and what a world when it's been for him. Tech, Austin uh, with Texas, and now the head coach at Ole Miss. Uh, one more note.